to at Europa Park's Christmas event. Of course, you are still joined by me, Sean Sandbrook, and Harry Turnstiles <laughs> himself, uh, where we're enjoying this event for the first time. I mean, it's very, very festive. Lots and lots of decorations around the park. And if you've not seen it already, make sure you check out part one, uh, which is an hour and 45 minutes of us going around yesterday and seeing everything to do with Christmas. These really are some of the longest vlogs that we've ever done on the channel, mainly because we've never seen Fantasyland at Christmas, and we've never seen Europa Park in this season either. So it's great to be here and we really want to show you everything there is to offer at these fantastic Christmas events. Uh, in the vlog, if you've ever been to Alton Towers and been on the runaway mine train, there it is, look. Uh, that's the front, uh, the front carriage of it on this little kid's ride. There you go. And how satisfying must that be for a job? Oh, he's getting going. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Hey. <laughs> You can tell they're both Mac rides, can't you? Uh, of course, when we came earlier this year, uh, we were here for the week that Ireland, the brand new themed area, opened here at Europa Park. So let's go have a little look around and see what they've done for Christmas. It's home to one of our favourite and most satisfying flat rides on the park. This it might be just a little rocking tug ride, but it's got a really nice soundtrack by Ima Score. It's called the Dancing Dinghy. So we're going to have a dance along with the dinghy in Ireland. I mean, there's so much here at Europa Park than just big coasters. And they always say this, but Europa Park has only got one looping roller coaster. There's only one ride here that turns you upside down. That is, of course, Blue Fire. Uh, and it wins all these awards. It just goes to show that big, massive roller coasters with loads of inversions, you know, isn't going to make an awesome theme park. So take that the smiler, basically. You know, you, you just to make an immersive experience, you don't need 14 loops in a ride. Theme something well. People will keep coming back and your gate figure will keep going up. So, give people a good experience, that's what I like to say. There it is, the dancing dinghy. This Irish theme area is lovely though. I mean, you look at the old children's world, there wasn't much here at all. Now it's really nice. And of course, Ireland flows straight into the uh, British themed area as well. Lots of Christmas lights to see around here, so let's go and jump on the dancing dinghy, ride number one. Dingy. shop just a little update to see if there's any milk and muffins available obviously if you watched our vlog from earlier this year you had the sad news when I reported that milk and muffins no longer exist at Europa Park but there's plenty of other milk items to see you through like the wonderful Europa Park milk a cow did you enjoy a ride on the dinghy 49.99 you can get some milk orders if you want to do some milking <laughs> No mug collection is complete without the milk and mug. That's quite nice, isn't it? Do you write your name on it or something on the big black sort of bit that goes across? I suppose you could do. Oh, it is like. Is it, yeah, I was going to say it looks like you write your name on it. It's just that's interesting. How much for that little item? It's eight euros. Eight euros. I mean, you've got all the milk under the sun in here, whatever you want. And of course, we've got the milk of cow down the bottom. Did you enjoy your ride on the dinghy? I did, it's yeah. a nice soundtrack, isn't it? It's, it's quite funny. <laughs> yeah. Not as good as the soundtrack you're going to get soon, though, on Sean's other uh, favourite flat ride at this park. You all know what's coming, don't you, viewers? London Crazy Taxis. There's the milk cow, look at that. If I won the lottery, I'd buy a milk cow. Isn't it nice? Let's have a look around the rest of Ireland.
Harry has dragged me out on the Bar Express. I mean, I didn't want to come on it at all. <laughs> Harry said, Sean, you know, I want the credit. I do. You know, you, you know, I was just walking past here. Right, come on, let's go to Blue Fire. No, no, I want to go on the Bar Express. So here we are on the Bar Road, on the brand new Most intense ride family the coaster. Road. Yeah, it's just quite intense, isn't it? It's a nice little theme coaster there. I mean, it's got all the little theming all around, all these nice little wheels and Euro Mouse coming out the chimney at the front. It's a very picturesque ride, though. I do like this uh, rock work design. And of course, you know, it's got really nice restraints as well. This makes it easy for the op to come and check the restraints, which is cool. I love these German little, you know, buildings like that. Reminds me of being back at the Birmingham or Manchester markets. Drive me on the Bar Express, I take him on the Spinning Dragons, that's what we do. Oh, Ireland, such a beautiful country. All they need now is the Kuka Lane coaster and then the sorted. Bar Express. Uh, Express. I did enjoy the dragons, but this is a very, very British sign. This is it. I mean, you got the toilets that way, you got England that way, and you got the pub that way. What's more important out of all those? Pub. Pub. Let's go. I know it's a kids' area, but still, pub. Toilets after. Then back to England. So little things like this, what, really make Europa Park. I mean, you know, you're coming here later in the day, you can have a nice beer, and like I say, you know, you got even Guinness in here, nice Irish Guinness. I love a good Guinness, don't we? We do. What are you typing? <laughs> it's just nice, all the little details, what they put inside here. Like I said, they've even got Sky Sports on. Got a little piano, and they have Irish music playing, and it's just generally a really nice area. The old McKay's pub. Of course, the key there is old Mac in the, in the name. They like getting the name in there. It's just really nice in here, isn't it? Sit up here, have something to eat. Always time for a Guinness. I just like how they went to the details of finding out everything they could about Ireland and putting it into this area. Really, really immersive. I suppose we should go up to England. <laughs> This is quite nice for the Christmas season. They put like a little ice walk. I mean, this is normally where they have all the little fountains squirting up, and obviously, as they like to you know, offer fountains for, for Christmas. Hello, there's a big polar bear. They turn it into like a little ice walk with all this like snow, snow sheets. It looks quite pretty around here at night, actually. Just little stuff like this, what really make it. I mean, it doesn't need to be done. But they do it just because they can, just to make it look pretty around the park. Very festive. It's like at Halloween, they put like a big spider walk through on this section. Oh, there you go, look. Ooh, some big crystals. How lovely. The London taxis! Woo! Off we go. Play with soundtrack on par. And there's Harry! <laughs> Bit of a Christmas remix, get your jingle bells out. Air-conditioned vehicles on request. 
very British ride, isn't it? British soundtrack. <laughs> do, 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 do. Woo! Just so satisfying. Da, 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 da. Not much leg room in this though. Oh, we love the crazy taxis, all them car parts. Da 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 da. Thanks for riding. Big finale. Jazz hands. has come out, don't worry it wasn't half eaten when I first got it, the chef hasn't decided to have a bite, got a nice bratwurst and chips, I still think the food is reasonably pricey, it was 7 euros 80 for a drink, chips and a bratwurst, which well, is about 6 quid with the current exchange rate, which I know isn't great, but I don't think that's bad, I think, you know, like some parts you go to and you pay a fortune for food, I mean, Port Ventura, Disneyland Paris, some of the ones that strike out to me as having really expensive food. Back in the UK, that's one thing we are quite good at. I think, you know, at our UK theme parks, such as especially the Merlin parks, food is reasonably priced, I think, at the parks. I mean, you can get a bad sausage at Thorpe Park and chips, you know, for a reasonable price, about five or six quid. So that's one thing we do do quite well in UK theme parks. Harry's got a burger. A burger. Some sort of burger. But yeah, Harry's just made a good point, actually. They don't put ice in the drinks, do they? So obviously you're guaranteed more value. I'm sure if you asked for ice, they put some in, but maybe because it's winter as well. But we're really pushing the junior club at the moment, which is a really good thing to do. I mean, gets all the kids on board and scanning little cards just to go around the park. And also while I've been sat here, I noticed this beautiful Christmas tree is actually decorated in very British decorations, apart from one. I mean, you've got a nice London bus just there, and then you've got Big Ben just there, or whatever it's called. What's the actual name of the tower? I can't remember. But then down here we seem to have an American school bus on our British Christmas tree. I'm not sure why, it's the only one, I mean, if you look at that, all the rest of them are British decorations. Oh no, there's another one up there. There's another one. Why is there an American school bus on a British Christmas tree? I'm not too sure, but I do like how they haven't just whacked any normal baubles on it. At least they have put some thought into it and put telephone boxes on and the Queen's guards. But, uh, yeah, a bit confusing that. Maybe someone from Europe Park needs to come and see and just confirm that we don't actually have yellow school buses in the UK. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, back for Christmas 2016. Welcome to Jimbo! Oh, where is it? Where's the gym ball? Where's the gym ball, Harry? Here it is, gym ball! Oh, gym ball! Woo! Where it is? I've got it, I've got it, I've got it! Oh! Turn the wheel, turn the wheel, turn the wheel! Give me the gym ball! That's it! Woo. I like dodgems that are powered by under, underneath instead of having a big rod sticking out the top. Hello. Here it is, Jimbo! Woo! Jimbo! <laughs> What's going on with Harry? What's going on? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
There is Jimbo! 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 Oh, turn the wheel, turn the wheel. Still, oh, he's getting out his car. Whoa, Jimbo! There we go. <laughs> it's, off. it's in the goal. It's mine now. Oh, Jimbo! <laughs> Let's go again. Jimbo! And <laughs> ball. I got you now. <laughs> <laughs> Harry's got the gym ball. Everybody's going for it. I'm going around this way. Gym ball! <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, what's he doing? Yeah. It's mine. It's mine. <laughs> gym ball! What's he doing? Handball! Whoa. What is it? It's a gym ball! Oh, whoa! <laughs> Alvin, safety! Oh my god! <laughs> hey. And Harry's got the gym ball. It's Ed Hormos! Oh my god! <laughs> really, really enjoyed a good ride there on Arena of Football, or as we like to call it, gym ball! <laughs> You can't beat that, can you? What a cracking dodgems, it really is. So we're having a little look in Europe Park Historama, just to discover a little bit about the history of this park. I mean, talking about investments, I mean, since the park opened back in 1975, every single year they've done something at this park. And of course, they've got all the different models of attractions, and it's a really nice thing to come and see if you do come to Europa Park, uh, where you can see like old sort of models of the rides for them to put in. You've got Ford Draft in there, the, the Rapids and Hotel Coliseum. Every time they build a new attraction, obviously they have all the different concepts here, but one of my favorites, and I show this in every vlog, is Eurosat, the inner workings of Eurosat. I mean, look at that. You wouldn't think there was that much character track inside there, would you? Look at that. I'd love that on my mantelpiece at home. It has to be a big mantelpiece, wouldn't it? <laughs> But it's just crazy to think how much this park has grown and you got the different Euro miles down here throughout the years. I mean, look how it started, a very different character to how we ended up. I love how it shows how he's developed over the years, starting way back from that one all the way through all the different Euro miles over the years, all the way through to Ed that we see today. He seems to have got smaller as well, doesn't he? <laughs> of course, Max family home there. Absolutely beautiful building there, Balthazar Castle. A little look at the land really before the park was, was built. I mean, you've just got the castle grounds and lots of lakes running around. The bit of a monorail down the back, that's pretty much all it started with. It all started with a mouse. So did Disney. <laughs> and I really like this and it's got a really nice interactive show which starts in 2 minutes 45 seconds. I mean, there's so much heritage to this part, but imagine, you know, a part like Alton Towers, for example, how much heritage there is for that, and imagine having it all on display, something like this, you know, it'd be lovely to have all the Alton Towers archives all on, on display in glass cabinets where everybody could see it. This place has got so much history, imagine what there has, you know, it's fantastic. Love that t-shirt as well. Holy night. Isn't it? <laughs> oh, isn't this nice? We've got some geese with some bows on. She's got a nice, easy job, hasn't she? <laughs> Just strolling around your over park. Right, we're going to go and watch the Eyes show. Surprise with the son of Santa Claus. Of course, I can't film inside the show. Similar to Fantasy's line with that one, you can't film inside the venues. However, I'll give you a full review of the show when we come out. I mean, it's normally a really good show. I enjoyed the summer one they do here. The, the Gods of Greece is really, really good. And it's just a really nice venue to do it in as well. Apart from the seating, 
I don't like the plastic seats inside this venue, uh, you know, but apart from that, it's a really nice sort of place to sit and watch a show, really good ice arena as well. So we'll see you afterwards. I'll give you a rundown of the show here at Europa Park. I love a good show. Ice show. just come out of the ice show and it was absolutely awesome. I mean, I've got covered in a bit of streamer at the end of the show. We all streamers coming down from the top. It was a 35 minute show and to be honest, it was really, really enjoyable. What I liked about that is it was an ice show that followed an actual storyline. And as much as the story at some points did go a little bit off, uh, yeah, there were some points I thought, hang on a minute, how does this really fit in? It did all tie together halfway through and then again at the end. So it's basically, you got Santa's son who had, it was trying to break in. This is what I got from anyway, trying to break into like Santa's workshop. And he had all his elves and things all around. And as he was breaking into that workshop, uh, there was a big sort of uh, safe in the middle. And he was just trying to break into the safe basically. Some really nice effects on that though. He had like a... A, gr a grinder and he was grinding against it wasn't he? Yeah. I don't know what you call it, like some piece of toolage what you get from B&Q and it, it had all the sparks coming off it which was quite cool. They did something quite similar for Halloween actually. Uh, but yeah it was good, lots of really nice dancing in there in the show, some really good costumes with all the lights in and it was genuinely a really Christmassy show, Santa was in it as well, uh, it was just yeah a couple of acrobats in there as well, nothing too much in terms of acrobats compared to the summer show, uh, what they do have in there, but it was just nice, the ice skating is really top quality though in that one, you, you can tell they've been doing an ice show here for years and they have some of the best ice skating I've ever seen, uh, you know, ever, so it's yeah, really enjoyable show, I think, but Mr, anything you got anything you want to add from that? No, like, the ice skating quality in there was fantastic, wasn't it? Lots going on. Yeah, yeah really enjoyable to watch. Yeah, we were just saying there, it's disappointing like how a lot of theme parks back in the UK don't have these big shows. I mean, Camelot theme park, which is closed, had the big jousting show, which was awesome. Uh, that was probably the biggest theme park show we had in the UK up until that park closed a few years ago. And then prior to that, American Adventure, another park that closed, where they had the big Wild West hunt show. So it just goes to show maybe there's not the demand for these big shows in the UK, but I'd like to think that in the long term, maybe they might get some bigger shows and it might be something what they go into I mean it's not just about large-scale attractions at these parks they really need to think about the overall experience and yeah Europa Park and many other European theme parks really do that so there you go Get the streamer off didn't seem to realize it was on me <laughs> there we go I'm not gonna chuck it on the floor I'll put it in this bin do I've been POV while we're at it let's have a bin POV we've not had one for a while have we on the channel here we go bin POV what we got inside so, what we got? Oh yeah, there's some uh, chocolate down there. That's it, that's your bin POV. <laughs> Outside Pegasus, I say you enjoyed. <laughs> whoop, whoop. We're going on Pegasus, a nice Mac Youngstar coaster. I do enjoy the theming on this one. I mean, I'm not normally a big fan of like scaffolding style theme, but I think they do quite a good job of this. It just looks quite picturesque and I like all the brickwork. It does really feel like you're in Greece. Hiya. Bit of a cue for the uh, Mike Young star. Well, it's a credit that Harry's not got, so we've got to get the cred. A cred's a cred, that's what we say. I really like the front car on Pegasus as well. It just looks really, really pretty. Let's go on, come along for the ride. Just random stuff like this, you know, random pottery, random stuff to look at. That's all you need, a bit of pottery. And they have one of the best theme parks in the world. I'll be going then on Pegasus. Not very happy about how long it's taken to dispatch a train with the VR. We've waited nearly 20 minutes it's on one train. It's not good. I'm not a big fan of how VR is slowing down. I ride on Pegasus. But here we go, Matt Youngstar. Beautiful views of Silver Star as well. And the car park. Off we go! Woo! Head chopper! Woo. A very nice family coaster. Into the Helix! TVW Bingo! Helix! Helix! <laughs> Bit of air time! Into another Helix! Helix! <laughs> And into the brakes. 
I just think that's a very nice family coaster. I mean, you know, it's not it's nice and smooth. Very enjoyable experience. It seems weird though riding it and not seeing Poseidon going round. Pegasus, a credit for Harry. Matt Young Star Coast. We've sold quite a few of these, Marco, actually. Enjoyed our ride there on Pegasus. But now we're going on the park's dinosaur themed dark ride, Universal Energy. Some really nice animatronic dinosaurs inside here. Charlotte really liked this one when we came earlier this year. She loves the good dinosaurs. It's a very good theme in here, actually. I mean, it's not really got a story or anything. But it's just a nice themed experience with some really good and realistic dinosaur animatronics. It's the Jurassic Park of Europa Park. I believe it used to have a pre-show inside this building. I mean, I never actually saw it, but I believe there was some sort of pre-show what used to take place before you went on it. But obviously they scrapped it off with it being an Omnimover style dark ride system. You know, it's quite free-flowing and it means, you know, it's never going to really get a queue. But it's built underneath Eurosat, this one, in the big ball. Let's go on. Believe I can touch the sky. Think about you every night and day. Spread my wings and fly away. Where's Harry? Oh, there he is. Hello. It's a weird little flat ride. This is he all right there. He's getting in. Theme park worldwide on YouTube. Check it out. Merry Christmas. We get that in every vlog, don't we? Hey. It's a weird sensation on this, I mean, you get a little bit of force, it's quite enjoyable. Woo! I love Harry's hair blowing in the wind. It's a bit cold, it's a bit warmer than it was yesterday, part one of the vlog. Like I say, check it out where we go on Woden. A lot of the other coasters here at the park. So make sure you check out part one. Right, I think it's time for Swise above on the Swiss bobsleigh. Let's go. This is an area of Europa Park that is really beautiful, and you have to put some effort in to come and find it. Really, I mean, unless you're going to go on the bobsleigh, you wouldn't really come around here. It looks even nice with all the Christmas decorations. I think it's a really cute little area having all the trees. It's just nice, isn't it? Like I said, the only bit of Switzerland I've ever seen is getting to Europa Park. Coming through Basel Airport. Oh, little baby's asleep. Oh. <laughs> That's a bit too many babies in one cot. That's not a baby in one cot. Oh man, she's got the she's got the chicken. 
Comment ça Allô Allô Let's roll the Mac up there. Again, more family pictures. With it being owned by the Macs, they love putting pictures of themselves up there. Rolling again, look. Yeah, it's just a, a really lovely area of the park. Like walking down this street here. It's very picturesque, isn't it? It is lovely. All the little flags, and I just really like it. There's just something about it. Right, let's go on the bobsleigh. We'll see you on the ride. I right, mean, Harry, we're going to get a little cosy. Off we go on the bobsleigh. Here we are on the front row. Me and Harry. A little bit well, cosy. Yeah, this is a bit cosy, isn't it? This is the most personal we've ever been, I think. <laughs> oh, it's so relaxing. Beautiful views there of Europa Park, and you're sat all wrapped up for Christmas. And I love all the buildings down the bottom. Wave at the guys over on the Matterhorn Blitz. Whee! Come on, wave back, don't be miserable. Hey, there we go. The Matterhorn Blitz. The one ride that Blackpool Pleasure Beach has got better than at Europa Park, the bobsleigh. Woo! Woo! Off we go. <laughs> oh. Into a tunnel. It still amaze me how these rides work. There we go. And now for the longest runoff on a ride at Europa Park. How many sheds can we go through? <laughs> One. <laughs> it's all themed nicely though. Even theme the back of that building, look. How many sheds are we going to go through? Number two. And then we reach the station. What a ride. Honestly, if you love Christmas trees, come to Europa Park at Christmas. The whole park is full of them. I don't think there's one area that hasn't got the Christmas trees, but I think this is probably the area that's got the most. I mean, you got a line of about 10 there, about another 10 on the bridge, about another 20 going down there. It's crazy, isn't it? I've never seen so many Christmas trees. It looks absolutely amazing. It looks awesome at night as well. If you haven't watched part one, like I say, check it out where we go on some of the other rides and, and of course, see the park at night as well, like we will be doing uh, near the end of this vlog as soon as it goes dark. But it's just gorgeous, isn't it? I mean, this is probably the most impressive part of the Christmas theme. And of course, when Euro Tower is lit up, and they keep that on all night. From our apartment in Rust, you can see, you know, you, you see Euro Tower, and it's just left on all night. It's crazy. Bon to France. <laughs> Oh, how delightful it is to be here on Velo da Vinci in the Europa Park. Isn't it delightful, Harry? It is. <laughs> it's just spiffing, isn't it? Looking around at the canal boats. Hello down there. It's just a beautiful ride. I think this ride should be in the English themed area of the park. I mean, it's just so delightful. Hello down there. Hello. You've got the vintage cars. Oh, it's just lovely. I really enjoy Villa Da Vinci. Don't know why I'm talking in this stupid voice, but you know, it's a really nice ride. The soundtrack's beautiful. And of course, you get something special on it. If we stop pedaling, it'll slow down. There you go. Same as if we pedal too fast and we get close to that one. It'll stop us. <laughs> We're off. We're coming for you. Because there's a proxy on the top. Proxy, proxy. Nice and close to the uh, EPX trash track. And of course you get something special here. We go. We're getting there. And it'll stop us from pedaling any faster. There we go. That's it. We hit the, we hit the proxies at the top. Also you get something very special. The P-Lights speaker. So there's the light. And it's got a speaker built into the top. Something very, very unique. The compass in the front. It's just a nice relaxing ride. Of course you've got some nice Christmas decorations down the bottom. Hello down there. Hello. Oh, isn't it relaxing? This is. La 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 la. Come on, let's try and get a wave. Hello. No. 
He's not having it. <laughs> what about this cowboy coming down? Let's give him a wave. Let's try. Hello! Woo! Hey, there we go, we got one. Now Alex couldn't join us because he's still rolling about, but there he is. Give him a wave as we go past. Alex the crump. What's that? You want some milk? Hey? You want some milk? There he goes. <laughs> Oh, the lights have come on on the Euro Tower. Oh, isn't it beautiful? A beautiful day in the Europa Park. Merry Christmas, everybody. classic relaxing rides around this area of the park and then right in the middle intruding all the way from Alton Towers it's the duck from the flume everybody there it is covered in a net light from B&M Bargains with a bauble for his eyes and a dicky bow on as well celebrating the flume at Alton Towers life coming soon a GCI wooden roller coaster there you go big round of applause put your food down at home come on put your dinner down that's it, put it down on your desk. Yeah, there you go. Clap along for the flume. The flume duck, everybody. Resurrected here at Europa Park. Thanks for the memories, flume. We'll see you in 2018 for some wood. Next up, it's time to go on the vintage cars, or as we like to call them here at Europa Park, the old timer farts. Let's go. I don't know what Harry's laughing at, that's the sign. That's what it says, it's the old, old timer fart. <laughs> oh dear. It's not allowed to stand up during the rides. Here we are on the vintage cars. This one you actually steal or you send it off the bridge. Going to a corner instead of going right, let's go left. Yeah. Whee. <laughs> oh. There's a little boat ride. It's nice how you actually steer this one, or tried to steer it anyway. Oh, there's the policeman. Oh no, we go too fast. Yeah, Harry knows he's down there as well. There's a little maintenance area with a transfer track, what spins off, which is quite cool. Instead of just having a shed where it goes into. Oh yeah, yeah, you're back, making back me steer. driving. Back back seat driving. What's your name, Alex Crumb? <laughs> Uh, you're driving better than Alex, anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> smooth driving, this is. Smooth driving. He's not hit the side yet. Oh, what, what can I say? I'm a pro. No! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's a bit like the old vintage cars at Alton Towers. Nice attraction where the driving school is in Clive Cookie Land. Here you go, here's your little transfer out. So obviously this bit here moves across there. It's got a little motor on it there, look. Isn't that clever? To take your vehicles on and up. Wonderful. Oops. <laughs> Europa Park even has its own Christmas market here in the German themed area of the park. And this is nice. It's a little carousel. Hello Santa. Hello Santa. Oh, we've all got Santa on. 
it's just a nice little thing what they do. Oh, loads of open fires. We're very impressed with the open fires. My favourite ones though, the big logs where it's burning inside. It's just lovely, isn't it? I mean, you can come here and pick up some goods, sit around on a bench. I mean, it's not as cold as it was yesterday, is it? But it's still, it's still not warm by all means. I feel like I had a proper German Christmas coming here in Fantasyland, and it's been lovely. It's something I've wanted to do for years, like I say. Oh, you got to have some patience to, uh, to do all that. This park is absolutely gorgeous at night. I mean, it's beautiful in the daytime, but when you see it with all the Christmas lights everywhere, it really is stunning. I mean, it's quite rare also to actually come inside Europa Park when it is dark. Because uh, even at Halloween, you know, the park shuts at its usual closing time and Horror Nights is in a separate section of the park. So, and of course you come in the summer when it's open till eight o'clock and it's not dark because it's summer. So, you know, it's, it's nice to actually walk around it and see it at night and of course we'll head up to Iceland and, and do some of those rides at night. That's Frau Holle. Old Mother Holwood. <laughs> yeah, it is it's gorgeous, isn't it? Of course, that's where we watched Luna Magica last night. Check out part one of the vlog where we check out Luna Magica, the nighttime show, which is held on the lake just there. And we have a very surprise visit from Santa, so make sure you check out part one to, to see that in action. Hello. The tech behind it. It's a very nice little area. It reminds me very much of the Efteling, this whole area. I mean, you walk around the, the forest at Efteling, it's very similar to this. Obviously, that's a lot bigger. It's absolutely massive. But this is a smaller version of it, a bit more compact. And I'd like to go to Efteling at Christmas, actually. Comment below, what's Efteling like at Christmas for any locals of the park? Might be something I'll look into doing next year. So many lights. I wouldn't fancy their electricity bill. Oh, <laughs> Someone's enjoying herself up in the window. Hello, you're right up there. <laughs> you having a bit of a laugh along? <laughs> you enjoying yourself up there, love? You enjoying that? Oh, that's it. Close your window. She's had enough. <laughs> I love you, Rose Park. walking around seeing all these decorations. I just want to show you all these shots really over across these two vlogs, just showing you all the different decorations there is around the park. But the one man sat over there doing his fishing, he's been there since the first game to Europa Park. 
Look at him, he's fishing. He, I, I first came in 2013, he's been fishing ever since, look. His rod's been going up and down, up and down. And he seems to be catching the same fish. I just want to say, whatever his name is, that, you know, well done for just sitting there for the past four years fishing. You're doing a really good job. Really good job. Hey, you're not too bored. Now this is somewhere where you wouldn't normally get to stand if you come at any other season here at Europa Park. We're now standing in the middle of where the trough would usually be for Ford Drafting, which is their Intamin Rapids ride. I mean, that's where you start going up the lift hill. Just there, look. So it comes underneath the tunnel. That's where you have all the water effects and there's all the facts along the side. We're standing right in the middle of it. Isn't that weird? <laughs> it's really strange just to think they've built this all on top. And of course, lots of different snow play around here. It feels weird seeing the pirate ship sort of swinging over, not over water. Give me a snow rating out of 10. 7 out of 10. Yeah, it's a good Galactica that, 7 out of 10. Isn't it lovely? Herzlich willkommen zur Fahrt auf unserer Monorail. Unsere Reise geht quer durch. Of course, the Monorail's even got lights all attached to it as well. I mean, how beautiful is this? Bereich bis hin zum Bahnhof im Europa Park Historama mit dem neu gestalteten Luxemburger Platz. Wir wünschen Ihnen dabei viel Freude und viele schöne Stunden im Europa Park. Oh, we've got some projection mapping going on there as well. Mesdames et messieurs, chers enfants. Bienvenue à bord du Monorail. Plenty of projection mapping here. We need to see the one in Greece at night again, actually, as well. Nous passerons près de l'église norvégienne et du quartier hollandais pour finalement arriver à la gare Europa Park Pistorama, située à côté de la nouvelle place du Luxembourg. Nous vous souhaitons Luxembourg un plat. Chers passagers, dans quelques instants, nous allons arriver à la gare Europa Park Pistorama, située à côté de la place du Luxembourg. Deux passengers. Luxembourg Square. They've cashed on the premier de la rivière. Europa Park. Ladies and gentlemen, dear children, Europa Park welcomes you to a trip in our monorail. Let this train take you high above our splendid park. If you love monorails, this is the place to come. We're on one manor at monorail. There's another one. Looks like we're moving onto the same track, doesn't it? <laughs> The train station Beautiful, lots of transport rides. When you've got a park as big as Europa Park, you need monorails, trains, plenty of different transport rides. It's just like playing Planet Coaster, really. You need to get your guests around. The trees are snowing and the ice can lights over all the buildings. These massive snow globes. Just the amount of effort and detail is amazing. Even on the rafts ride just down the bottom there, they actually take some of the rafts off uh, and put themed elements on there and send them round instead, which is cool. 
a very special part. I know this is going to sound absolutely crazy, but that has taken place for me, my number one ride in this park at night. You might be thinking, what, a monorail over rides such as Blue Fire and Woden? That to me was just a really special experience, travelling above my favourite theme park and seeing it with all the lights everywhere. It was absolutely beautiful, it really was, just a, a really relaxing experience, the music playing and just walking, uh, riding around seeing the park, yeah, it's beautiful. Really, really did enjoy that. Uh, and of course I love the rides here at night, I've not really done everything here at night to be honest. I mean I've done Woden and Blue Fire when it just got dark before, uh, a few years back, but uh, yeah. That, it was gorgeous, wasn't it, Harry? How was yeah. that? You could go to sleep on that. Couldn't you could, sleep. yeah. You just might just sit on it, to be honest, and go round again. Absolutely stunning. It's a breathtaking park, and at night, it's even more magical. It really is. Talking of magic, time for a bit of Woden. Hopefully, we're going to get to see the uh, extended queue line in operation. It's really, really pretty inside, and Harry's not seen it. Oh, there you go, 25 minutes. We should do. It should be running wild in the dark. Let's <laughs> go on Woden, 25 minutes for the GCI wooden coaster. That is how it's a light up a coaster though, isn't it? You've got the woody lit up through the structure and of course blue fire in the background. Let's go. Wodan. Hey, I'm I'm a sheet, we're on Woden in the dark. Yeah. Woo! We're on the front row on this beautiful GCI wooden roller coaster that opened here at Europa Park for 2012. Look at the views. Oh, there's Luna Magic going on. So hopefully we're going to get some fuego. Fuego, fuego, fuego. Come on. Don't let me down, Woden. Hey! Oh, a wooden roller coaster with fire attached to it. Where's the logic in that? Off we go. This should be fast, hopefully. That is running a bit faster than yesterday. Just a bit. How was that? Oh my god. It's a good night ride that. It's a really good night ride. All the tunnels and wow. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. That is probably one of the most intense rides you'll ever have. I mean, it's so fast, it's straight to the point, it's no messing. And then we take you straight through the garage at the end as well. There we go, Woden Timber Coaster in the dark. Wow. That's a really, really good experience. Just what you want to see after a ride on Woden. The lights 
spot the foot on Blue Fire's trains are awesome. And just the coaster itself lit up like it is. I mean, it looks fantastic, doesn't it? It's even making the camera go a bit blurry looking at that train. They're so bright. Of course, this you feel a bit sneaky. You feel like you're in a ride area around here. But don't worry, there's animatronics that were supposed to be down here. Basically, this is like what used to be the extension footpath to the ride. Well, it still is, you know, if it gets busy, you go down here. But I suppose they leave it open as a little footpath. So all the enthusiasts especially can come down here and get some close-ups of the, the prototype, the first map mega coast. I mean, if it wasn't for this ride, then we wouldn't have the beautiful helix at Leesburg and well, we wouldn't have construction 2018 at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. That's one thing that I really can't wait for at Blackpool though. The fact we're gonna be able to walk around this coaster, you know, like we are now and sort of see it all. I mean, at Blackpool, it's gonna be intertwining with the big one. You know, the steeplechase, it's going to be going around all the park, so you're going to get some really nice shots of it. And I really hope it's got a nice, sexy track colour and train colour, much like Blue Fire has. It is a very, very beautiful roller coaster. Yes, I did just describe Blue Fire as sexy. <laughs> Cafe Hustle looks good for the Christmas season. Love Cafe Hustle, some really nice chocolate cakes and hot drinks if you want them in there. And here it is. Wow. The camera really doesn't do this right justice. It looks absolutely gorgeous. And a lot of people commented on Facebook and Twitter whilst I've been doing live updates saying, hang on a minute, how come you're going on Blue Fire? It's not supposed to be open for the Christmas event. Well, it is a very sneaky opening, so to speak. They had the staffing just in case. So if it is warm enough, if it is over three degrees, this ride will be operating. So there you go, it's on a 15 minute queue for Blue Fire. So let's go and have a ride on the Mega Coaster in the dark. Coming towards the end of our Europa Park vlogs. It's been really, really good though. We've had a fantastic trip. It really has. And tomorrow we're back here again where we're going to spend the day off camera, getting some more rides and see some more shows. Uh, but it's been absolutely fantastic. We've had a really, really nice trip. And of course, we'll share our highlight from the two days later on at the end of the vlog. Let's get on Blue Fire. I'll show you some more shots from the queue line. Powered by Gazprom. Off we go, Harry's having his pulse red. Blue fire in the dark on Theme Park Worldwide. And we're on the train with the lights. Really nice at night. <laughs> the inversions are just so smooth. <laughs> Best inversion on the ride, here we go. Beautiful. And we got the audio as well. Lighting, audio, and a beautiful experience. Map Mega Coasters, you are beautiful. Just look at the design of them as well. Yeah, it's just gorgeous to look at. What a ride. <laughs> Let's 
after an awesome ride on Blue Fire in the Dark. Wow, that was awesome. I couldn't see a bit of projection map here in Scandinavia. I mean, this looks nice. They're not really even advertising this as a show. It just sort of happens, really. What are you doing? I know, it's like last night, actually, isn't it, when we came out of Coliseo and saw some projections. That looks really nice. It still amazed me projection mapping. I mean, the fact that someone's had to sit there and decide exactly where they want things to be and so it fits the buildings just right. And this is lovely. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your night. Finished. Oh. You rode the far. It's snowing. Very, very nice, though, that. Just looking at the details of doing things the lights, I mean, I don't know how, but they've attached ice cut lights to the balloons. I mean, there must be interesting power in all these extra lights around the park. They must have a very, very good electric system. What a beautiful park it really is, though. I mean, all the extra stuff they put in. It's definitely a brilliant season to come here, and it's the most magical season, I think, for Europa Park. Uh, as much as it's beautiful in the main season, this is when it gets a bit more magical coming at this time of year, so. It's, it's just lovely, isn't it? It really is. Even Halloween has its own bit of magic, though, to be honest. I mean, there's nothing scary inside the main park for Halloween. Obviously, Horror Nights, which is a separate event, but, you know, for the kids and stuff, it can be just as enjoyable, uh, you know, coming for the Halloween season. It's still very magical, the magic Halloween events. Beautiful. But at least we know when we get back home, there's no need to be sad, Harry. Because what, what have we got? What have we got in Hyde Park Winter Wonderland? What have we got? Olympia Looping, haven't we? We have. <laughs> Olympia Looping in Winter Wonderland to keep us happy. Oh dear. Ah, look at this. A bit of projection mapping going on on the side of Poseidon, the map water coaster. Of course, this is closed. We had a little look at this yesterday in the daytime. Come back to see it at night. That looks awesome. Again, we're the only ones around here watching it. Oh no, Poseidon's falling down. Die Liebe hatte uns vereint und wird uns nie vereint. Just the little things like this that aren't advertised, what they do just to make people happy as they're walking around the park. 
I mean, it's not like it's even on a main path, really. You've got to be going on Cassandra to even come down here, really. A ride on the Euro Tower with all its beautiful Christmas lights hanging from it. Just had a ride on Euro Sat as well, which is awesome. Look at that. Beautiful, all the strobing lights. The camera really doesn't do this justice, to be honest. There's so many lights everywhere. As you've probably seen throughout this vlog, so many Christmas trees as well. I've tried to get as many as I can in the shots for you to make you all feel festive with us being near to Christmas. I know you all love Christmas trees. <laughs> Genießen Sie das grandiose Panorama am Horizont von unserer Heimat, der Schwarz. And there we go, that wraps up Christmas here at Europa Park. First time visiting this event ever since I first looked into Europa Park and coming here. I said that one day I'm going to come out here to the Christmas event and finally come and see it. You know, it's been lovely to come here and see the park. So many Christmas trees, 2,500 of them to be precise, according to the website. Uh, that isn't a joke. The park is full. Even when you get outside the park around here, there's trees everywhere. And honestly, it has been a really magical experience. It's something very, very different to what I've ever experienced before with Christmas. Uh, a lot of people associate Christmas with being, you know, manic time of your life, rushing around every year. This has been very, very relaxing relaxing and it's been just beautiful. The park is really nicely decorated. The shows that we've seen have been beautiful. Uh, Luna Magica, the ice show, the parade, all fantastic along with other shows here at the park. And just generally the overall experience, seeing Europa Park properly in the dark uh, has been my highlight for, for this trip. Just going around there, seeing things like the Euro Tower, it's all been lit up. I mean, the fact they put all that effort in to light the Euro Tower up and all the strands from the top just there, it looks fantastic, it really does. And as you go around all the details, what, what the park have done. So that's my highlight. But of course, it's been Harry's first time for Christmas as well. What has been the best part of this trip for you to Europa Park? It's tough to pick. It has been absolutely fantastic, this whole event has, but I've loved Arthur every minute. Arthur so in the Minimoys Kingdom. Yeah, it's it's a incredible. technical ride for a technical guy. It is, and the theming in there is just second to none. Yeah, the queue line, and even the baggy system, everything's been thought about on That's that. very intelligent. I like seeing more parts using that. There That's you really go. Fun. So It's been a wonderful trip. It's been a pleasure as always, Harry. Yeah. really has. Like I say, we're going to have a nice day off camera now to enjoy the rest of the park. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. I hope you've really enjoyed our visit here to Europa Park here on Theme Park Worldwide. I'm sure this will be the first of many trips out here for us at Christmas. And the next vlog from this park will be for the brand new ride, Project V. So I'm looking forward to seeing that in action. Like I say, soaring at uh, the Disney Park is something that I've enjoyed, but I've never particularly liked the theme. This theming looks stunning. I can't wait to see it when it's finished. And we'll be back here in this park next year in 2017 to come and see it. But uh, can I just point out how they really deserve that award on there. The best theme park worldwide, 2014, 15 and 16. And it's also promoting our YouTube channel, Theme Park Worldwide. Thank you very much, or Danke for watching. Dankeschön from Europa Park. 
and the Christmas event. A very, very Merry Christmas. I hope you've enjoyed all of our Christmas vlogs. Me and Harry will see you in a couple of weeks' time over in Orlando, Florida. Thanks for watching Theme Park Worldwide. And that means it's time to cue those credits. Bye, guys. From Europa Park in Germany. <laughs>